before we begin let me briefly set the context for this discussion at cerebral pursuits the focus is not just on concepts but on how engineering decisions are actually made and executed on the ground in recent years epc contracts have become central to railway infrastructure projects and bm is frequently mentioned as a solution yet most documents stop at intent they do not clearly explain how bm should be contractually embedded within railway epc contracts or what needs to change in the standard epc agreement to make it effective in practice the podcast you are about to hear addresses this gap focusing on execution responsibility and decision making so that technology supports engineering judgment not replaces it with that context let us begin welcome everyone today we're diving into the application of bim in epc contracts for indian railways it's um a fascinating look into how digital integration transforms traditional railway construction absolutely the whole idea of using building information modeling not just as a tool but as um the backbone of an integrated project delivery it's really a game changer right the core concept here is that in epc contracts responsibility is centralized BIM acts as a centralized digital information system tying together engineering design, construction planning, procurement sequencing and even execution control. It yeah. essentially bridges the gap between design and construction. So, what exactly makes BIM so well suited for these EPC railway projects? I mean, isn't it just another software or is there more to it? There's definitely more to it. It's like um It's like using a single integrated roadmap for all the different disciplines including track design, earthwork, bridges, and even signaling. And this helps in uh, eliminating those typical coordination issues that slow projects down. Mm, it's interesting because in traditional contracts the designs can be quite fragmented. With BIM you get early design finalization, constructability checks, and effective interface coordination, right? Exactly, yeah. Instead of siloed work, you're seeing a unified approach where everyone from civil engineers to system integrators works on a federated model um from the get-go. And that federated model is crucial because um it aggregates the alignment geometry, earthwork planning, and even details for major structures like bridges and culverts, right? Totally. For example, BIM delivers detailed insights into alignment and formation. which is pretty key for new railway lines where precision is everything. Right. Speaking of precision, how does BIM help in managing the risks during construction? Well, risk management is um another core benefit. With BIM, issues such as geotechnical uncertainties and interface dependencies can be identified early through clash detection and scenario analysis. It highlights potential risks and lets the project team revise plans before things get uh too out of hand. Mm. It's almost like having a crystal ball, isn't it? You can see where conflicts might occur, be it between the civil, the track or even the signaling systems. Precisely. And um when you think about the construction planning part, incorporating 4D BIM techniques into scheduling, that's another big win. It helps visualize the sequencing, manage logistics, and even plan for safe simultaneous work fronts on brownfield sections. Yeah, that's a smart way to reduce time overruns. Absolutely, especially when you consider the cost control aspect. I mean, using 5D BIM for precise quantity extraction really transforms cost estimation and financial forecasting, doesn't it? 5D BIM brings the advantage of transparent quantity management and helps in uh reducing disputes like overscope changes or variations. It aligns the project's BOQ with real-world construction outputs, which is super critical in such massive railway projects. But, you know, some critics might say, isn't it all just adding another layer of complexity? What do you think about that? I respect that viewpoint, but here's the thing. BIM, when properly implemented, really simplifies the decision-making process. It's um not just a fancy add-on. It amplifies engineering wisdom. Even though there could be challenges like skill gaps and resistance to change, the framework helps streamline processes rather than uh complicate them further. Mm, I see your point. That said, integration isn't without its hurdles. Legacy systems, for example, can be a real drag on the implementation of BIM, right? Absolutely. Legacy systems and entrenched traditional practices are major challenges. The key here is leadership and clear governance to overcome those hurdles. 
BIM isn't just about the software. It's about transforming organizational processes and culture. Exactly. And part of that transformation involves revising contract conditions, isn't it? Embedding BIM requirements into the EPC contracts ensures that um, everyone operates on the same page regarding deliverables. Yep, that's spot on. Contractual elements like a mandatory BIM execution plan or BEP and clear milestones for pre-construction, during construction and as-built stages are critical. They ensure that BIM isn't um, a contractual formality but a genuine enabler for project success. Right, that's essential. Now, on the note of contractual changes, how do you think Indian Railways can manage this shift from drawing-based oversight to information-based supervision? Well, that's a transformative leap. It involves shifting to an oversight model where, instead of constantly checking drawings, the employer uses BIM data to monitor progress and performance based on milestones. This not only improves efficiency, but also reduces micromanagement while ensuring quality. Mm -hmm, I like that approach. And speaking of oversight, the cultural change is as important as the technological upgrade. Capacity building and training programs become a... Um, non-negotiable. Exactly. The strategy includes hiring BIM trained personnel, empowering BIM coordinators, and even running pilot projects to progressively build the organization's BIM capability. It's a complete ecosystem change. Right on. It sounds like these pilots are the testing ground for this digital transformation. By starting small and scaling up, Indian Railways can iron out uh, the wrinkles early on. Yeah, totally. A well-chosen pilot project, ideally one that's simpler in scale, but significant enough to showcase BIM's benefits, can provide valuable feedback and build internal momentum. Exactly. That's a proven strategy. Now, thinking further ahead, how do we ensure that BIM, once implemented, continues to evolve? What um, are the long-term strategies? Long-term success relies on sustaining BIM transformation through continuous learning, regular updates of protocols, and fostering a culture that embraces a uh, digital innovation. This means active research on advanced integrations like digital twins and AI-driven predictive analytics for infrastructure management. Yep, it sounds like a roadmap into the future. And I imagine that integration with existing enterprise systems like ERP and GIS is essential to create a unified digital ecosystem for asset management, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Integrating BIM with the current IT systems ensures data flows seamlessly, reducing manual entry and boosting um, overall efficiency. It's about making the technology work in harmony with existing processes, not replacing them completely. Mm, that's critical for operational success. One thing that stands out is how BIM can turn traditionally adversarial contractual relationships into more cooperative ones. It's fascinating how the digital model can bring transparency and collaboration. Exactly. That's one of its most powerful aspects. BIM transforms the relationship from being purely transactional to being a cooperative engagement where both the contractor and employer share a common digital platform for progress tracking and issue resolution. Right, truly a win-win. But let's not shy away from uh, the challenges. The lack of standardized protocols and the skills gap among stakeholders are still major concerns, aren't they? True, and those challenges highlight that BIM's success is less about the software itself and more about leadership, governance, and change management. It requires um, a commitment to training, continuous improvement, and importantly, a strategic vision. Mm -hmm. Leadership is key here. I wonder though, what happens if BIM is just treated as a contractual checkbox rather than being embraced as a process? That's a valid concern. If BIM is only seen as a formality, its potential for truly integrating project delivery is lost. It should be embedded in the contracts in a way that drives outcomes, not just as a tick box exercise. Right, it's about substance over form. So, in essence, if Indian Railways can push past these challenges through better training programs, phased rollouts, and continuous stakeholder engagement, they are setting up a model for infrastructure excellence. Absolutely. When BIM is implemented fully and effectively, it becomes a powerful tool for integration, predictability, and informed decision-making. It amplifies the existing engineering know-how and positions Indian Railways as a modern infrastructure leader. Mm -hmm. That's truly transformative. In the end, this digital shift isn't just about technology, is it? 
It's about uh, reshaping the entire culture of how projects are delivered, making construction smarter, safer, and more efficient. Exactly, and it's um, like strapping on futuristic sunglasses to see all the challenges and opportunities ahead clearly. The journey to full BIM adoption is a strategic one that will require patience, investment, and a willingness to embrace change. Absolutely, and it's an exciting journey to watch unfold. Well, this definitely gives us a lot to ponder about the future of railway infrastructure. Here's to hoping that the integration of BIM will drive efficiency and um, transform the way we build our railways for the better. Exactly so. Thanks for the great discussion on how BIM isn't just a tool, but a transformational process reshaping project delivery in railway EPC contracts. You have been listening to Cerebral Pursuits, where engineering is explored beyond drawings and documents, and decisions are examined in their real-world context. Thank you for listening. 